Hello everyone. Today we are going to see a topic based on cables supported on the same level subjected to uniformly distributed load. You can see that this cable is supported on the same level and it is subjected to uniformly distributed load for the full span. L is the span of the cable. VA is vertical support in the point A and VB is the vertical support in the point B. H is the horizontal thrust. Small h is the central dip of the cable. W is the uniformly distributed load per unit length. We know that in this cable there is no horizontal load so the horizontal thrust in both of the supports will be same. Now let us find the vertical reactions VA and VB. We know that in this cable there is a symmetrical loading. So we can easily find the vertical reactions. For that we have to find the total load and then divide the total load by 2. Here we have uniformly distributed load. To find the total load we have to multiply the load with the distance so WL and when we divide that by 2 we will get VA and VB so VA and VB are WL upon 2 now let us make an expression for the horizontal thrust for that I am going to take moment about C from the point A in this case I am moving towards right hand side Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. VA is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is L by 2. The uniformly distributed load is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative. For the uniformly distributed load we have to multiply with the distance and distance by 2. Here the distance is L by 2. So L by 2 into L by 2 into 1 upon 2. The horizontal thrust is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative. For the horizontal thrust it is the perpendicular distance which is H. We can take this term on the other side so it will become positive. 2 into 2 4 L into L we will get L square. 2 into 2 into 2 we will get 8 L into L we will get L square when we add these two we will get WL square upon 8 then we can take this H on the other side so it will come in the denominator so this is the expression for the horizontal thrust WL square upon 8H now let us see how to find the tension in the cable the formula to find the tension is root of vertical component square plus horizontal component square. The vertical component V will change along the cable but the horizontal component H will never change. It will be same at any point of the cable and it will be equal to the horizontal thrust which is WL square upon 8H. The maximum tension will occur in the supports because they are in the higher level of cable. We know that in the supports A and B, the vertical component V is the reaction VA and VB. We know that both of them are same. So in the formula, we can take either VA or VB. We know that VA is WL upon 2. And H is WL square upon 8H. WL the whole square we will get W square L square. 2 square is 4. WL square the whole square is W square L power 4. 8H the whole square is 64H square. From these two we can take W square L square upon 4 outside. Then we can take this out of the root. It will be WL upon 2. So this is the expression for the maximum tension. Now let us see how to find the minimum tension. 
the minimum tension will occur in the point C because it is in the lowest level. We know the formula to find the tension that is root of vertical component square plus horizontal component square. In the point C, the vertical component will be 0. So we will have root of h square. Root of h square is h. So the minimum tension will be the horizontal thrust h. We know that h is wl square upon 8h. So the minimum tension is wl square upon 8h. Now we are going to find the length of the cable S. Yes. From the cable, let us take a small length. Let us keep this length as a ds. Let us make horizontal line and vertical line and connect. Let us keep the horizontal distance as a dx and the vertical distance as a dy. Let us use Pythagoras theorem. ds square is equal to dx square plus dy square. When we take root on both the sides, we will get this. With dy square, let us multiply dx square upon dx square. There will be no change because dx square upon dx square it is 1. From these two, let us take dx square outside and then let us take out of the root, it will be dx. In these two terms, let us take the square outside. In the cable, let us take the left side part AC. Let us keep C as the origin. So here X will be 0 and Y will be 0. We know that the horizontal distance from C to A is L upon 2. Now let us use the parabola equation. Y is equal to KX square. In the point A, the value of X is minus L upon 2 because it is on the left side and the value of Y is H. In this equation, let us apply both of them. For minus L upon 2, the whole square, we will get L square upon 4. Finally, for K, we will get this. In this equation, let us apply the value of K so that we will get this equation. Now, let us differentiate Y with respect to X. For X square, it will be 2X. 2 into 4, it will be 8. We have made the ds equation. In this equation, for dy upon dx, let us apply this. When we take the square root of this, we will get this. For this, we can use binomial theorem. For root of 1 plus x, this is the expansion. Here for x, we have this. Using this, we can expand like this. When we make square of this term, it will be very small. So no need to consider these terms. Only we can consider these two terms. So here I have taken only these two terms. 64 upon 2 it is 32. In this equation for this term we can apply this. Now to find the length of the cable AC we have to integrate ds. The limits for the integration will be 0 to L upon 2. But there is one more part that is CB. We know that length of AC and CB should be same. So to find both of these lengths, we have to multiply the integration with 2. Now let us start integrating. When we integrate 1, it will be x. And when we integrate x square, it will be x cube upon 3. Then we have to apply the limits. Only apply the upper limit. No need to apply the lower limit because it is 0. For x, we have to apply L upon 2. For x cube, it will be L by 2, the whole cube. So we will get L cube upon 8. We can eliminate 8. It will be 4 here. We can eliminate L cube, it will be L here. Then let us take these two inside. 2 and 2 will be eliminated. 4 into 2, we will get 8. So this is the formula to find the length of the cable. L plus 8H square upon 3L. 
Now let us see the temperature effect on the cable. For the length of the cable, just before we have made this expression, let us partially differentiate the length with respect to the central dip H. For L it will be 0. For H square it will be 2H. Two, 2 into 8 we will get 16. Let us take delta H on the other side. So it will come in the numerator. There is one more expression for the increase in length due to temperature. That is S into alpha into T. For S we can apply this. Then let us multiply both of these. This term will be very small. So we can eliminate this term. No need to consider that. In this case for delta S we will have L alpha T. Now let us equate these two terms. We can take this term on the other side. So it will come inversely. L into L it will be L square. For delta H we have made this expression. Now from the point A let us take a moment about C. R A is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is L by 2. The uniformly distributed load is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be negative. For this load we have to multiply with the distance and a distance by 2. The horizontal thrust H is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be negative. For the horizontal thrust we have to take this distance. This distance is H. Let us take this term on the other side so it will become positive. This is the B moment. Let us keep this moment as MC. So H will be MC upon small h. Let us take H in the numerator. It will come as H power minus 1. Now let us differentiate H with respect to small h. We know the formula for the differentiation n into x power n minus 1. Here x is h and n is minus 1. So the differentiation will be minus 1 into h power minus 1 minus 1. Minus 1 minus 1 we will get minus 2. Minus 1 into mc we will get minus mc. Let us take h power minus 2 in the denominator. It will come as h square. Let us arrange this term like this. We know that mc upon h is h. So for this we are getting minus h upon h. Let us take delta h on the other side so it will come in the numerator. Instead of delta h let us apply this. h into h it will be h square. Then let us take h on the other side. Finally we have made this expression. From this expression we can come to know that when the temperature increases the central dip increases and the horizontal thrust decreases because we have got a negative value. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.